Hey guys, what's going on? So, one of the most common questions that I get asked on the channel by people who have never done FPV before is, John, how do I get started flying FPV? I want to get a kit with a controller, goggles, and a drone that works. I want to start off by saying that, first of all, the best thing that you could do for yourself before you actually get on a drone is to fly a simulator. There's lots of great simulators out there. My personal favorite is Velocidrone, but that's an easy way to get started is to grab a simulator. But I realize there are people out there that are hungry to actually fly something, to get in the air with something, and today I have the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 ready to fly kit here. It's got the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 drone, the Emacs goggles, and the Emacs remote controller. To get this in the air, there is no computer needed, there's no beta flight uh, programming needed. You can just throw it up in the air and fly it. So, I'm finally gonna give this thing a try. I bought it, I've been telling people for years, go with an Emacs ready to fly kit, get it. But I've never actually used it before. So, now after flying the hobby grade stuff for years, I'm gonna actually try this kit and tell you what I think. Emacs actually has this kit in two forms now. You can actually get the Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2, or you can buy the kit and then bind the same controller to this drone or this drone. So they're offering two different packages now. For today, we're gonna to be flying the Tiny Hawk 2. I think that this is the best for a true beginner beginner because of the protected duck guards and the whole construction of it is very, very durable. And you guys will see that while I'm flying. I would love to bring you guys inside these goggles with me, but they do not have an onboard DVR, so I'm going to reuse an external device to record the video that I see just to give you a general view of what I see in these goggles. Okay, I have picture in the goggles. It's all there. That's great. You don't have to do anything to this thing to get video from it, which is like half the battle sometimes just getting the uh video transmitter to link up to the goggles for some people so this is ready to go ready to fly here in the upper right hand corner we have the signal strength to the remote we have in the lower right hand corner you're the amount of uh, time you're flying the bottom there is the battery life that's the 4.30 that you're seeing uh, 4.30, 4.35, that means you have a fully charged battery. If it's any lower than that, it's not fully charged. You should probably get it back on the charger. In the lower left-hand corner, we have the band, channel, and output power that the drone is running on. You don't have to worry about this for uh, a bind and fly because it's already set up to go by Emacs. You're not worrying about any of that. In the upper left-hand corner there, we've got the mode we're on, and this this switch on the right of the controller changes it. All the way down is air mode, middle is horizon mode, and the all the way up is stability mode. Now, stability mode will keep you stabilized. It will level the drone. Um, it's not going to let you flip over. It'll just keep it level. I would personally recommend going ahead and just going full into air mode or acro mode you don't want to develop bad habits by starting out in stability mode then that's exactly what we're going to do today so now a lot of people get screwed up by this so the switch on the left is called the arm switch and this is the switch that you're going to use to start the drone up now if you have your throttle all the way up and you go to start it you're gonna get this message that says throttle and you might be like well what is that what does that mean that means your throttles up you've got to bring it down okay now it says arm switch okay it's still not gonna let it arm because you haven't reflicked the switch you're gonna to have to flick the switch again so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna flick the switch and we should get it, get it turned on now and there we go we're bouncing around a little bit here but we're off And I'm just kind of cruising here in air mode with a little tiny off. Oh, I just crashed. Okay, I have to go get it. See, I'm not used to flying with a controller like this. I fly with a much different controller. It's got a, a much, uh, much more accurate control per se. And so I'm not used to this. And this is not my first time out with it, but when you fly the same hobby grade controller every day, you're just not used to how this thing behaves. 
All right, I'm getting pretty fantastic video from these Tiny Hawk goggles. Kind of just cruising around the park here. Getting a little scratchy over here by these trees. Overall, this is very passable. Alright, I'm going to try some moves now with this controller. So that was what we call a split S. There we go. Okay. Another flip. We try doing a forward flip. Another forward flip. I'm having a little bit of trouble keeping the bottom of the goggles in my focus here. Let me readjust these a little bit. There we go. Oh. Right, we're about three minutes and I'm done with this battery. So we're going to land and change it out. Like guys, I have to be completely honest with you. The controller in this kit is by far the weakest link. I believe it is harder to fly with this controller. At least for me, anyway. Little bit of wash out there. It's a little hard to fly with this controller for me. But listen, don't put that off, don't let that uh, put you off of getting the kit. And here's why. This is still a great stepping stone to try to figure out if this is something that you really want to do. It's going to be a little harder to pull off some of these moves, I think, because of this controller. I'm really not a huge fan of it, but the goggles are still good. Let's try, uh, let's try an inverted yaw spin. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. <laughs> I gotta go get it. Alright, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that when you crash, you disarm. Make sure you disarm, which is the left stick, or not the left stick, sorry, the left switch, all the way down. After any crash, always give your quad a look over. Uh, I noticed that these propellers tend to kind of pop out a little bit. You're going to want to just press them in. They'll snap back in. Check your camera angle. Check everything after you have a crash. It's always just a good practice. Good thing to get into the habit of doing. All right, and we're off. Yeah, so it's not impossible to use this controller. You can pull moves off. I just feel as some as someone who's co who comes from using a hobby grade transmitter, I am having a harder time doing what I would normally do using this. Oh, that was a bit of a hard hit. But you just get up and go right back to it. Yeah, anyway, I just feel like I'm having a lot harder time pulling off the same moves that I normally would. But it can be done. The goal of this kit is not to 
become an FPV expert. It is to get you in the air, it's to get you flying, it is to get you having fun. Oh! <laughs> this is probably going to happen to you at some point. You're going to lose a prop. You might lose two props. Um, the props go on in a very specific way. You can't just put any prop on any motor. So it's really important that you take a note of the prop shape and make sure it matches diagonally. That's a pretty easy way to remember it. This prop should match this prop, and this prop should match this this prop. I find if you try to, you know, say, tell people to look at the pitch, they look at you like you have two heads. Um, but I just say, take a look at the quad and match it diagonally. Oh, oh God, I'm crashing again. Jeez, yes. Oh my god, I just crashed again! Oh man. Let's go over a few things that I think you should do to try to make this thing fly a little better, especially as you get used to it more. Now I feel that the default rates that it comes with are not that great, so I'm going to try to demonstrate to you how to get to the Betaflight OSD menu here. Now, to get to the menu, you're going to go left stick all the way to the left, then right stick up. That should bring up this menu here. Now, of interest is the profile section, and you could choose the rate profile. Now, I'm on rate profile two, and what the rates do is the rates kind of control how sensitive your sticks are. If you give more to the rates, then the sticks will be more responsive. If you give less, it'll give less. Um, rate profile two, as someone's been flying for a while, this is what I like. And actually, I would recommend you to go ahead and change it to rate profile two. So I'm actually going to go through the rates here and bump these up just a little bit more. I feel like I need a little bit more added, a little bit more sensitivity to my sticks. And yeah, I'm going to bump the Expo up a little bit too. And leave that alone. You, you don't have to do this stuff, but if you're interested, it would make it fly better. Also, I would encourage you to go under Features, and then to VTX and under power change it to 200 milliwatts and then uh, you, can, you can scroll through and then save I'm actually running on 200 milliwatts of output power that'll give you the clearest possible signal go ahead and save and exit here and let's try the new rates oh and throttles up all right let's try the new rates and see, I, with the with the higher rate, I definitely get better. It, it's basically compensating for these for this feel of these sticks. That's better. That's actually a lot better right there. So I would say the stock rates on this for me are not good, and that's just coming at you as someone who's been flying for a while. Yeah, you gotta bump the rates up. See, that's that's much better. I was able to get this thing to fly much better. Just a little bit of rate adjustments. But the stock the stock rates that they put you on are so, so low. I kind of don't understand that. Because you'd think you, they'd want to make it easier for beginners. Now we're gonna do invert yaw. Much better with improved rates. Ooh, a little bit of scratch on the VTX there. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't believe it crashed. All right, disarm, disarm. We always have to disarm, remember. All right, now that you've seen me fly, you've heard my tips, you've heard my thoughts, should you get this? And I'm gonna try to answer it. I have no problem with the goggles, they do their job, they're clear to see, I like that I can put my glasses in them, those are fine. This controller though, this this controller's whack. This thing is wacky to me. It's, it's really toy grade. 
It's a very toy grade controller. It's the kind of controller that I would expect to get with like a, a $50 drone. The good news is, you know, this kit is cheap. I mean, you're gonna pay anywhere from what, 150, 160, maybe 180 for it, depending on what it is. I got, I've got a link down in the description below to get it down uh, the cheapest possible for you guys. But, you know, this is a cheap kit. It's meant to be cheap. It's meant to, to just give you a jump into it, get you a start. This thing, you're gonna smash, bash, and crash this thing, and it's gonna survive. Uh, I've already crashed it multiple times. I crashed it out here, and it's fine. You're well protected here, and you can pull the moves off. You can do it. Just be patient, work with it, bump those stock rates up. I'm telling you, you have to, if, if you can muster getting into the beta flight menu using my instructions, uh, bump the rates up. But you know, for a package that you don't have to connect to the computer, uh, if you're just ready to go, bind and fly, up and running, I think Emacs overall did a good job. Just wish this controller wasn't such a piece of poop. As far as whether you should get the Tiny Hawk Freestyle Ready to Fly kit over the Tiny Hawk 2 kit, if you're new, I'm going to tell you something right now. Do not get the Freestyle 2 kit. That's my opinion. I think the Freestyle 2 is not a beginner drone i know they sell it like that and it's great that you can bind it to this controller you well <laughs> yeah great that you can bind it to this controller this is going to break a lot easier there's a lot more exposed motors here and exposed camera i mean everything is way more exposed on this drone so i would say start with this then buy this separately when you're ready to move on when you when you can stop crashing this then move on to this. That's my recommendation. I'd like to also mention that when it comes to getting any support or help, um, I've had very good experiences with Emacs, com the company Emacs USA. Um, pretty much no matter where you buy it from, they will help you out. The, there, there's a good warranty that comes with this stuff. If there are any problems, they're going to help you versus some other vendors that you know, you might not be able to get help and support on it, you know, long after the sale has been done. Like, let's say this controller dies in a month or two or something happens, you know, I think Emacs will be there for you. In my experience, they've been there for me when I've had problems with their products. So, you know, your mileage may vary. However, just the fact that they have a, a website, especially if you're in the United States, Emacs USA, and you can get problems resolved through there, that is fantastic at least to me that's fantastic and when you're new starting out you know you're you're gonna maybe need some help you're gonna maybe need some support if something goes wrong with this thing so that's just a nice line to have if you need it all right that's it guys that's my review of the tiny hawk ready to fly kit i hope you guys enjoyed the review and as always have a great day guys i'm gonna go do some flying you guys take care